Okay, so this video is about the OnePlus 8, but it's gonna move into a conversation about the company as a whole, and then their transition to that upcoming product, the OnePlus Z. So if you've seen my previous video on the OnePlus 8 Pro, I gave this a very positive review. I really like this phone. It's expensive, but it's a very good phone. It's just packed with all the things you would expect in a high quality flagship, including the camera this year. Expensive phone, but good phone. This video is about the OnePlus 8, the regular one, the cheaper one. And the way we're gonna do this video is we'll talk about the OnePlus 8 and you just come kind of mini review on it. And then I wanna move on to bigger, juicier things. So I like the phone, I do not like its price. The things I like about it, so the color, I mean, very partial to this teal color. Uh, if you're on the fence of like whether or not this is actually a good color in real life, I think it is. There's a lot of really pretty phones out there that just don't look good in real life. Like the, they look good in videos. This looks good in videos and in real life. So the size of the OnePlus 8 is a little bit smaller than the 8 Pro. It just fits in my hand a little bit easier. And the curvature of the glass, uh, just like the wraparound of it, is not as steep or it's not as pronounced as the OnePlus 8 Pro. It's still curved edge. I don't love it. I would have preferred a flat edge, but it is, it's just a nicer feel than the OnePlus 8 Pro for people that don't like curved edges, which is me. And I feel like a lot of you guys are in that same boat. Another thing I like about this phone is the great battery life and that 30 watt warp charge. And I also like the screen. It's a 90 hertz screen instead of the 120 from the OnePlus 8 Pro, but it is a very fast screen still, if that matters to you. I mean, the whole phone is super fast. The RAM is slightly slower on the 8 versus the 8 Pro, but it's something that I think most people will not be able to pick up on unless you're running a benchmark or something. The camera on the back is also slightly less protuberant than the one on the 8 Pro. It still juts out, but it's a more normal camera hump. Like if you hold on to this thing on the back, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel crazy. Whereas the one on the 8 Pro, like you pick it up, you know it's the 8 Pro just from that camera hump. It is quite pronounced. Okay, uh, things that I don't like about the regular OnePlus 8. The first thing and the main thing is the camera system. It is surprisingly mediocre. The OnePlus 8 Pro's camera is so much better this year that I thought that it would kind of carry over. I know the 8 Pro's running better sensors, better lenses, but I just, I was expecting more. The regular lens and the wide angle are decent, but the telephoto is non-existent. It's a digital zoom. And the macro lens is just, it's no good. I was surprised at how bad it was. The 7T last year was awesome. The 8 Pro, awesome. The 8, like the macro on that thing is like weirdly bad. But that's what we have, a mediocre camera system on a $700 smartphone. And I gotta be honest, I do not think that it is worth the $700 price tag that it has in North America. We're gonna talk about other markets in a second, but at this price point, it just, it doesn't feel right with me. It's something feels off. So if you look at what you lose, like what do you lose going from this phone to this phone? Like it's a $200 price difference, right? You lose wireless charging, you lose certified water resistance, you get a lower res screen, you get a slower screen. The whole product is slightly worse, but the biggest difference is really the camera system. The OnePlus 8 Pro has a significantly better camera. Now, if you look at any kind of online publication or YouTube review of this phone, it was like everyone shared the similar sentiment of it's an expensive phone, but it's good this year. Like the product is really good this year, including the camera. And that camera was the thing that justified the price tag, right? That $900 price point was like, that's so expensive for a OnePlus phone, but because of the camera system, they kind of earned it. They earned the stripes to charge flagship money on the OnePlus 8 Pro. This phone does not have that camera system. The OnePlus 8 is a noticeably inferior camera and it makes the phone feel like a OnePlus phone from the past where the emphasis is on how the whole product is good except for a mediocre camera. And in, because of that, it just makes this product very difficult to recommend to people at a $700 price point. Like any other OnePlus phone ever has been, if you cared about tech and you were enthusiastic about having a good fast phone, it was an easy recommendation, right? This at 700 bucks is hard to recommend, even for someone like myself who is a fan of the OnePlus brand. So this is where I wanna transition this video into the more interesting conversation. The question of why. Why is this priced at $700? It really doesn't make sense. Like I feel like OnePlus could have priced this at $600. I wouldn't be surprised if at the, you know, the OnePlus HQ, they actually considered selling the OnePlus 8 in North America for $599. And at that price, this would have been a very popular phone. Like all the publications and reviewers would be like, hey, 
this is the best $600 phone on the market right now. And they would have sold a lot of OnePlus 8 phones and probably less OnePlus 8 Pro phones if they had priced it at 600 bucks. But I think they priced this thing at 700 to make this guy, the OnePlus 8 Pro, look better. Because when you bring out a phone that's 900 bucks, and this is the most expensive OnePlus phone ever when they brought that out, that's a very expensive phone. But when you anchor it next to a $700 phone that has had enough features stripped away, that $900 phone starts to look pretty good. See, I'm convinced that they could have put wireless charging onto the 8. I know the 8 Pro has it, but they could have put like five or 10 watt wireless charging on the back of this. Add a coil, been like a couple bucks in cost, but they didn't do it. It was like a, it was a purposeful omission so that, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. The 8 Pro has to look the best. The best way to do that is to make this thing expensive and feature poor relatively. So that I believe is the story in North America. With the North American pricing, I believe that this phone, the 8, is, I mean, it's got its purpose. There's people that are looking for something like this, but the there's this ancillary purpose of it to, to make the 8 Pro look that much better. Now, this conversation gets even better when you look at global markets because there is a third player, the OnePlus Z. Now, in my iPhone SE video, I talked about how the pricing of OnePlus phones in India is completely different than the way it is in North America. Like the OnePlus 8 is a cheaper phone than the iPhone SE there. It's the strangest thing, but that's just the way it is, partially due to taxes and tariffs. But I think there's also an element of like brand positioning. Like I feel like OnePlus, they built their popularity and their brand through really cheap pricing. And you know, their fan base really, they want that. So I think for OnePlus in India, they're willing to eat some of that profit margin to maintain that popularity lead. That's perfectly fine. But there's also this element of that OnePlus Z. And this is a phone that I think will be very disruptive in the market. It's been leaked quite heavily. It supposedly has a 6.4 inch OLED panel with a centered hole punch running at 90 Hertz, supposedly. It's supposed to have a flat screen instead of the curved edges that we're seeing on the OnePlus 8s and a camera cluster in the back that's very similar to what we see on the Samsung Galaxy S20 phones. And it's supposed to be running a MediaTek chip instead of the more common Snapdragons. And it's gonna be priced supposedly at the equivalent of 400 US dollars, which is incredibly inexpensive for a OnePlus phone. So this product, the OnePlus Z, fits, like in order for that thing to exist, you need to have very particular pricing in the rest of your, of your repertoire of phones, right? So in Asia, it makes sense. And in Europe, if you look at the pricing of these phones, it makes sense. That cheap OnePlus Z can slot in nicely, but that phone cannot exist in North America. I don't think that they're gonna bring that OnePlus Z into the US or Canada. It just doesn't fit. You take a 400, let's say they bump it up in North America to like 500 bucks. You take that and you place it beside a $900 and a $700 like flagship and semi-flagship phone, it just looks so out of place. It doesn't fit, it's too, it's too good, it's too cheap, it's too powerful, it's too disruptive to its own brand. So that is why I think they priced the OnePlus 8 the way they did. I think it's a great phone, but I just don't think it's worth $700. If you're interested in buying this thing right now, you know, there's the 7T, the 7 Pro, the 7T Pro, those all offer similar experiences to this, very comparable for a lot less, like 500 or $550. And I think this thing will go on sale. Like by the end of the summer, I feel like the eight will drop down to like 600 bucks on the OnePlus store. But that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time. This was a little bit different of a video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you if you actually liked this conversation, I feel like I could talk about this for like six hours, but if you liked it, let me know with a thumb. All right.